Hello, my name is Calvin and this is the tech I missed and welcome back. Um, as you might know, in the last video, if you saw the last video uh, where I talked about um, uh, shift registers, um, I mentioned that I was working on some projects and one of the projects I was working on is, is a lot easier to do because I already, done, I already done one before. It was the uh, 4116 RAM tester. Um, I stopped selling the old one. It's a lot bigger and uh, I don't think it's as good as the new one I did. So I sort of just redesigned it, um, made it a, a little bit better and uh, yeah, with the code and everything. So it's a lot smaller now, as you can see and um, it works really well I'm happy with it and what I'm going to do now is I'm not going to show putting it together or anything like I did with the other video I'm just going to go over uh, some of the parts and show how it works and that'll be that so this this should be a quick video Okay, so here is the new board, the new tester, and here is the old one. As you can see, uh, there's quite a bit of difference in size. Um, this was an Arduino Nano. Um, so instead of the Arduino Nano, I just went ahead and used an AVR chip. So that saved a lot of space. So don't really need this anymore. Um, so what we have, oh, and I also used the 1602 display, which is no longer necessary. I'm using these tiny OLEDs. A um, little bit smaller, but it's a lot nicer. Um, so, and I did get some actual ZIF sockets in, so that's a lot better. So what we have here is we have 4116 in there already. Um, um, mini USB for power. Uh, you can plug it into either, either computer or a regular wall work or whatever you want. Just some connector to an outlet. Um, there's the power button. Um, get to these buttons in a minute. And then, as I said, this is an AVR. Um, this is our one of our ICL 7660s. This gives us our negative 5 volts. And it doubles the 5 volts to 10, but really a, to about 9 because of the voltage drop across these uh, uh, diodes. And then it goes over to the other ICL 7660 which also doubles the basically 9 volts that came from this one. It doubles it to about 18, a little bit lower, more like 17. Even though these, even though these are shot key diodes, there's still a little bit of voltage drop. So it ends up being around 17 and a half or something. And then it goes over to the 12 volt regulator. And from the 12 volt regulator, it goes to the 12 volt pin to the um, 4116. So this gives us our 5 volts and doubles and then doubles. Our negative 5 volts I mean. And then doubles and then gets scaled down to 12. So we have our negative 5 volts, our 5 volts, our 12 volts and our ground here. So that gives us all of the voltages we need for the 4116. And now what works is it's pretty easy. Okay, so we have our little logo here, shows up, and then we just press the start button, which is this one. Over here, we have two options. We have simple test and a stress test. The stress test will just continually 
test over and over and over and over and over and over until you want it to stop. Uh, that's basically just to see, just to do it for a long time to see if it gets hot or anything like that. Or, you know, to see if it messes up somewhere along the way. Um, I had initially thought about putting a, um, a, a temperature sensor here just to see how hot it would get. But there really wasn't a place for it. And I think you can do a, a finger test well enough to know whether or not it's getting hot. So, um, it would have been nice, but there really just is, with the zip socket, there's no way really to put it on here to, uh, test. So, let's just start with the simple test. And so it will do our test here. And what it's doing is it's going through every address and writing and reading a one and a zero at every single address. And it does, it does that uh, basically four times. So it tests every address four times by writing a uh, zero and then a one. Writing a zero, then reading it, then writing a one and reading it over and over and over. Does that four times, and if it tests, if, it, if the test works, it works, and it shows that it's good. And then you just press this button to get back. Let me do one more test real quick, just to show you again. So that was good. So now if we want to do a stress test, we just go over here to stress and we test. And you can see the light blinking. <coughs> Excuse me. And it's just going to do this until um, you push the enter button to go back. I mean, it's not getting hot or anything, but who knows? Maybe you have some issues with um, something overheating. I got this idea because someone who was putting together one of my projects asked uh, how to do it and I wrote the code for him and I figured well if he wanted it maybe someone else might want that too so I went ahead and added it to this and uh, that is it push stop goes back to the menu we can do a simple test again and there we go um, <clears throat> these come off. I built these and added these because, um, let's go ahead and put, put, unplug this. I added these because really, you don't really want to trim these down. Uh, the zip socket, uh, pins. Because they're basically an integral part of of this inside here, and I, you can do it if you want to, but I think it's not a good idea. So the way this works is, I mean, if it won't really sit flat all the way. I mean, you can hold it still, but that won't sit flat, and I don't like that. So I just made. Just 3D printed these little things here. Nothing major. And they just go on here like this. And, um... Now it will sit flat. and It's not hitting any of the, uh... It's not hitting any of the, uh... Pins that might stick out here at the, on the bottom. It's just an added little thing I thought would be nice. Well, we can look at these other ones real quick just to make sure they work. There we go. It's working. Here we go.
This one's taking a little longer. That one took 18 seconds. Go ahead and do these ones I've done already. That's it. If you'd like one of these, there is a link down below. I also have them on eBay. And I suppose I'll put them on Etsy as well. Um, but yeah, so. I like the improvement. I like that it's a lot smaller and it's just all around just better. A lot of the uh, components are the same. Most of the components are the same except for the screen and I actually was able to get the uh, ZIF sockets. I ordered the ZIF sockets early enough to where they, they came in uh, by the time I was done. And I actually made sure that I had the right dimensions for the socket. So everything works fit perfectly. I'm very, 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 very happy with the, with the way this turned out. And uh, hopefully you can get some use out of the, one of these. Um, again, my old... I have the project on my website for building your own if you'd like if you'd like to do that um, it won't be the, this exact one but uh, you can certainly look at the schematics and all of that and get code and feel free to change the code any way you want uh, it's Arduino code the, the other the old one uses an Arduino I'm not going to put this on my website I mean if you want to, if you decide you want to build one, you can just use the old uh, stuff that I have on there. Um, but yeah, so these are going to be for sale. Again, you can go below to get to uh, go to the link to my website to purchase one. I've also got my um, my uh, my Zoom uh, floppies for sale there for the Commodore um, fifteen forty one drives. So those are there as well. Um, coming up soon, be ready for a another chip tester. Hopefully I'll be done with it um, in the near future. The other chip tester will be testing everything except for these. And the only reason I skipped the 4116 for the chip tester was, is because it would have doubled basically the cost of that board and I didn't want it to be that expensive um, because I in order to get for just one chip I would have had to put all of this circuitry here or all of these components on um, just just to get the 12 volts because most almost every other chip uses a regular RAM or certain chips they almost all use 5 volts but because this one uses negative 5 and 12 makes it a lot more difficult. Um, it takes up more board space and it just, again, I didn't, didn't, didn't want them to be like a hundred bucks or something like that, really something ridiculous. So I went ahead and just made this a separate board. I originally had planned to add this to my other chip tester that will allow you to choose uh, different ra different RAMs and other other chips, but just because of how much more, how many more components it would have take, taken, I decided to do just, just keep them separate. So that's the way it's going to be. So anyway, um, uh, hopefully you got something out of this video, and hopefully you enjoyed it. Um, I will see you next time. Until then. Again, this is, well, it's the Mini 411 Ramp Tester. Mini 411 Ramp Tester. 
and again you can buy one below from my website link or you can get it on eBay or Etsy I suppose it's it's going to be it'll be cheaper from my website for obvious reasons because I don't have to uh, give eBay any money so probably the best way to do it would be to get it from my website but entirely up to you if you want one there it is and again this is the old one um, I do like the black but I kinda decided that I was gonna go with traditional colors from now on so we're gonna go ahead and stick with the traditional green so that's it thank you very much take care